Good morning, righteous people. All right, so where are we this morning? We are in the process of building the little bride's she shed. Uh, obviously, we're already moving along quite a bit. I'll just quickly run you through some of the considerations. Uh, the first of it is, is that you can see as we move out here, that the land actually drops down this way quite a bit, which means we've got to level this space. Now, what did I do? Well, I tried to do it with a pick and shovel, if you can believe it. But once I realized this corner, which is actually was the highest corner, I'd have to drop down. That's probably about four feet. I was like, okay, that isn't happening. So I rented a uh, Bobcat. I'll just click a picture here for you. Uh, and I came in here and I just leveled it out to the best I could. Now, I'm not a master uh, Bobcat driver or user, believe me. Um, so it took a bit of a time, but it was just a day. And I had spent two days with a pick and shovel. Uh, the ground here is really good, uh, very fertile up top. Um, but you can see as we got deeper, uh, we started to get into, even down to bedrock. Uh, but that's pretty good. You have a four foot of, of pretty good um, soil before you get down to bedrock. You can't ask for better than that. I mean, in all honesty, you know, could have easily gone to uh, bedrock sooner and had less opportunity as far as the garden goes. So we're super happy about that. But there's a lot of um, just uh, shale, shale rock here. Uh, so we'll do our best to try to move that out. I'm going to put a, um, a French drain in around it because of the runoff here. I'll put a French drain that comes around here just to make sure we, we push the water again away from the foundation. Um, I used uh, this concrete block. Um, let's see here. Yeah, if you can see it. That's the foundation. I had looked at a whole bunch of options, skids using... Uh, railroad ties um, and uh, even um, treated lumber which you can actually see I'm just using to prop up the uh, the trailer a uh, different number of different things but in all honesty uh, because of the different variations and just wanting to put down a gravel base and everything I uh, went with those blocks uh, so then on top of that I have two by eights um, this wall is uh, 16 feet, that wall is 12 feet, and then I have a six foot uh, porch off of it. You might wonder why I don't have uh, my trusses up, but I have a window in. Well, you know, you wanna show some uh, progress to the bride and show her what it might look like um, and whether it meets standard. So uh, I just put that in there temporarily just to, to do that. Um, so. I've done this pretty much all by myself. I did have a buddy come over to help me with the trusses. Uh, but other than that, just by myself, then I use um, OSB uh, for the flooring. On top of that, OSB is not ideal. I should have used actually a flooring, but my God, the prices right now. These things are 30 These were like 8 to $10 a piece. I'm now paying, I paid 32 two weeks ago, and I'm paid 34 for the load that I've got on the uh, on the um, trailer over there a piece so this is getting super super very expensive uh, but it was 4600 if I were to buy the shed that's without plumbing that's without electrical just the shed this will probably come about the same price um, uh, but that's with all in all in you know okay so anyway back to the point so then I put down this OSB uh, like I said instead of like actual flooring which just has the tongue and groove to slip in because I'm gonna put a, a half inch um, pine flooring over the top of this this is nice and strong and then that will lock it in that is obviously it's designed for flooring so it's tongue and groove I'll go the opposite directions um, so that I make sure that I've got a good solid lock uh, that's key to anything. It's just making sure, and you'll see when we put the walls and the uh, 
and the sheathing up on the roof after we put the, the uh, trusses up. Um, you just want to make sure things are interlocked uh, so that they're offset and they're going opposite directions of each other uh, whenever possible. So let's see. So put that down. Uh, that isn't too bad by yourself. You know, used glue, then used screws um, for uh, like the corners and then the midsection. Um, but then I used uh, the roofing nails, um, not the roofing nails, the uh, framing nails. Um, just for extra, you know, coverage to make sure that I've I've locked it down. I did uh, down the center here. Uh, for some reason, those boards did not come out. I don't know why I'm doing everything 16 on center, but anyway, for some reason they didn't match up exactly. So I had to do uh, some cross members all the way down. Uh, but that's fine. That locked it in, no problem. Uh, you know, when you're doing these by yourself, or even frankly, if you're a professional you know, you're going to have to make adjustments. Things just don't work out sometimes. Uh, the walls, built the walls here on the platform, uh, pushed them up and used these two by fours. Of course, I had them all over before. Two by fours just to hold it plumb uh, while I locked them in. Then as I built a second wall, I put just like a cross member there to help lock those two together. Um, just because I'm by myself, I had to do what I could. You know, it was seen pretty rickety for a while there until I got everything up. And of course, now when I put the trusses up and then I sheath it, uh, it will just lock it in more and more. Um, but you know, they're, they're, they're good and stable now. But yeah, it was a little bit rickety there um, for a bit. So we're gonna have a window here. I'm just gonna have a workbench uh, for Rochelle on that side. This is the front actually looking out. Look at the pretty nice view, huh? She's got right there. Sorry about the sun. This is the English mountain I talked about before, and then that's round top. Um, so this is gonna be a door, obviously. And then this is gonna be a window here, and another window here. Then this is going to be a double door. That header was, oh, for the love of God, trying to put that thing up by myself. That wall is so light, except for that header, which is a 212 by uh, 12s with OSB sandwiched in between. Um, I couldn't get a, uh, the uh, glue board. So uh, went with, you know, traditional style. So anyway, that um, really heavy, but trying to put that up, that was the hardest wall. But anyway, this is a double door, and then this is gonna go out, and she wants a sort of a greenhouse, but really it's a little grow house just to start seeds and that sort of thing, so it'll step out onto that. She's actually gonna be in the ground there, so I'll have to put a step there. Anyway, pretty simple um, shed. This is going to have, I'm sorry, uh, this is gonna have a, um, I haven't put those rafters up, you can kind of see where I have um, the, uh, the um, I'm sorry, the, uh, oh dear, the gussets, where I have the gussets. Um, they're set up to have another board go out and that will uh, create obviously the, uh, the um, roof for the porch. And then she and the girls uh, can sit out here and enjoy a cocktail or whatnot here too for looking out over that space so that's pretty nice right there so let's see here uh so what am i doing now let me just tell you something all right i mean for the professionals out there you know you could have given me some guidance uh maybe before now but so the trusses there's two better options than what i did for the trusses the first option is to buy the trusses but uh and you know what it might not have even been that much more expensive to tell you the truth with the way the lumber is today um and i would have done that the problem is is that you know planning is not my strong suit i tend to just move to get things done so but 16 by 12 with a uh, 10 to 12 um 10 uh, to 12 pitch you know is that's pretty standard i could have gotten this the bottom and that would have made my life a lot easier but i didn't so at the end of the day is i had plans um that I, we had purchased and so i followed those and we built the uh the trusses well the second option which ultimately probably would have saved me time is to build um, a form uh, in which i built the trusses the I told you 10 to 12 ratio, um, uh, you know, rise to, to run 
um, on the trusses. The most important part is to get the peak correct. That way you know that you have the pitch correct for the roof. The issue is this, this is what I'm facing now. So some of these are an inch taller than others. Fortunately, I'm just an inch. But the reason for that is some of these boards uh, were, of course, were longer. And when I cut them down, the way the angles are, some of them are just at the bottom. All the tops I made sure were exactly uh, 40 degrees. 40 um, outside, 50 inside for the angle. Made sure, like really seriously dedicated, focused on that. So those are correct. So I know that the pitch is correct. But the boards themselves, yeah, um, I don't think I got those exactly right. So like I said, I've got an inch difference on some of them. So I've got to adjust for that about how I'm going to put these up and have them all so that they are the same. Fortunately, the pitch is the same. So it might be just a matter of taking off the top because I'm going to have a roof vent anyway. Um, so I'm taking off part of the sheathing at the top in order to create the roof vent. So if I just take the, the top off of that, if the pitch is correct, it won't affect uh, the way that the, that the sheathing lays on it. I'm thinking. So again, this is a work in progress. I'm going to try. Uh, you'll see I've just got those two boards up because again, I'm putting this, these on by myself. So I'm going to, you've got them like this hung in there. I'm just going to tilt them up. I've got hurricane ties uh, for a couple of reasons. One is, you know, just for the wind. But the second thing is that um, it'll make it easier if I tie those into these boards uh, where they're supposed to be, then when I tilt it up, I'll be, that'll be a good anchor point that I can sort of more efficiently just tie that, the, um, the trusses into each other, or the trusses into the, the walls. And then I've got, of course, boards that are, these are on twos, so two foot. Um, then I'm, I'm, you know, obviously gonna use the, uh, uh, oh, what's the term for that? I know what the term is. Anyway, um, uh, the boards in between to lock them each together. Um, I don't know why I can't pick up that word. It starts with an S. Anyway, so that's what I'm looking to do. I'm first taking all of these. I'm going to put them up here, and I'm going to sort of lay them out. Uh, how I found out that I, I actually was off on my, um, on my height was my uh, king post, which you can see I haven't put them in yet because my king posts were all over the place. You know what I mean? Like I said, I mean, it's only an inch, but an inch is a big, is a big difference. So my king posts were different. And I was like, how is that possible? So anyway, I should have used, um, you know, a jig or a, uh, a you know, a, a, um, a form in order to put these in that had the proper pitch and everything. And so that each board laid in there and then I could cut them and, and screw them down. Um, but unfortunately, when I was doing this about a week and a half ago, I was really racing against time because of the rain uh, and having to get back to Virginia. So as a consequence, I didn't do that. Um, and so now I'm going to pay the price by trying to have to, to fix it now while they've already been made. Uh, so my recommendation to you is not to do that, uh, to have some help. Uh, that always helps. Um, and to create a, a jig that you can just lay the boards into and make them all the right size and height. But as we go through this, you'll learn. Maybe this will be a complete failure. And I mean, it's possible I have to tear the whole thing, all these uh, trusses down and redo them. I mean, it's possible. Uh, you know, at the end of the day is you gotta get it, you know, right. So anyway, there we are. All right, so let's get started. I'm just gonna put these out. I've pulled these out. I had these just strapped to the walls the respective walls um, just so they would sit while I was gone for about 10 days uh, for any wind or whatever and now uh, we're just I'm just gonna lay them out put them out as best as I can as far as the the heights and then you know try to prop some up and just see how they they work and then see whether I what I have to do as far as um, cutting uh, to try to make sure that they're the same um, height and then create the king posts uh, to put in uh, 
between the peak um, and the uh, the lower chord um, to or chord to to, to just uh, you know lock these in. Okay, here we go.